Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Our God is good. He is the Lord eternally and he never changes. I welcome you this new day to receive the word of God from our, our bishop, Bishop Peter Gatimo, coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi, Kenya. And we are glad that our God is faithful and he has brought us this far. Indeed, God has a word for us even today. Prepare your heart and God is going to bless you and to minister to you in a very, very unique way because he knows what he has for us, for us individually and for the church and for every person that is ministering in his house. Therefore, brethren, I'm persuaded that even today that the Lord is going to speak to us in a great way. Prepare your heart, prepare your mind to receive the word of God and God is going to bless you in a mighty way. We are going to pray and then we welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God according to how the Lord Jesus Christ has revealed it in his heart. Blessings be upon your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and, and goodness and kindness. You are the Lord. You never changes. Even today, God, you have something for us, for every one of us, King of glory. There is the bread of life for us that you have given to your servant, King of glory. As he comes to minister, Father, use him, O oh God, that a person somewhere is going to be encouraged, uplifted, even those that are sick to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word is able to reach us wherever we are. Father, we honor your name because you are God and you are doing exceeding abundantly above that which we can pray, receive of the glory. We thank and worship you because you are here together with us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Let us welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. Wonderful. Jesus is Lord. Now, thank you. We're going to share the word of God on a topic of unlock your faith. Unlock your faith. I prayed for you and I've come to discover a majority of people have faith that need to be unlocked. Uh, one, people, we have issues that requires Three, one of the three things. There are issues in our lives that requires revelation. Revelation is when God leads you to discover something that cannot be known in any other way unless God speaks or intervenes. There are issues that requires revelation. Issues that require revelation. You know, when Moses was leading the people of Israel to cross over Red Sea. They, they did not know. There was no other miracle, such miracle or encounter in the Bible, in the previous experiences. And this is a new thing that God is causing people to face the Red Sea while enemies are very close from behind. And they are helpless. And there's no other option. They have to close. And the Lord is showing them now, your way to the promised land is through this lake, through this sea. And there are places whereby men and women of God, you need to have a heart that can at least sense or articulate something that God is doing. Even your mind, a mind that is clear and pure, can sense something from God. A heart that is not spoiled, a pure heart that is used to the word of God is very easy to sense a new direction by God. And therefore, there are issues that will require revelation. Revelation is when God unveils something, speaks something, do something that you can't do or know in any other way unless he intervenes. Another thing that people require and we require now is new strength. There are issues that cannot be solved unless God gives you new strength. And that's why Bible says in Isaiah 40, towards the end, the Bible says, the, the Bible says he gives strength to the weak. He gives strength to the weak. The Bible says, Especially in verse 20, uh, 28, 
uh, 29, Isaiah 40, 29, it says, He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, He increases strength. And because God knows, in this context, or in this situation, you cannot achieve unless He gives you new strength. He comes around and says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall because the situation requires new strength. And he says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. They shall walk and not faint. There are things that you will not achieve unless God gives you new strength. And the Bible says, there's what God says, waiting upon. It's not resting before God. It's waiting upon the Lord. Some people confuse. You sit down and you are just withdrawn and you don't do anything. You are just there and you say you are waiting. It's an issue of active free, coming to God, open mind cleaving to his doors for God to do to, uh, to anoint you. Another thing, there are things that will not happen unless you obey God by faith. Just obey God and step out by faith. That's when, uh, if you read Matthew chapter 14, verse 29, the Bible says, Peter saw Jesus walk on water. And Peter said, Jesus, if you are the one, Command me, to, command me to come to us, you walking on water. And Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the one, come. And Peter stepped out by faith. He had never walked on water. There are things, there are businesses, there are, there are commitments, there are adventures, there are, there, are, there, are, there are new, new, new moves that will not work unless you obey by faith. God Sometimes you command you. Yes, go and do it. Do it. By my word, do it. Peter, in Luke chapter 5, had to obey by faith. When Christ said, now Peter, go back to the waters and catch fish. And he said, I've been in that lake throughout the night and I caught nothing. But by my word, I'm going back. Obey by faith. You know, according to you, there is nothing. But because God has spoken, I want to obey by faith. Not my faith, but faith built on who God is. That is very important. And God will bless us. It will unlock, unlock our faith. Another thing that will unlock our faith is when people come back to themselves. You know, uh, if you don't analyze the truth and you, you just live and live and live without taking a moment to discover yourself, to analyze a situation, to compare alternatives, to clear the way until you get the best for God, Sometimes you may not discover yourself. And that's why the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse, I think verse 17, the Bible says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? Now, this is a situation that most families can find themselves in, even youth, whereby you are in hunger. You are in hunger. But you need to discover your father. In this, in this situation, let's change just from that father, other father, and come to God. Do you know majority of people are suffering? They just need to discover a, a key or mystery of the kingdom. And God just changed you. Anybody, people who have been blessed, least from low levels to high level, 
have them give testimony. They say it is started by unlocking, knowing, having a key from God. I did this. I did this. I obeyed this way. I believed this way. And things started working. I discovered secret of the kingdom. Uh, one time I had this woman who came to my office uh, and complained about the husband so much. And I said, no, I just need to give you key to what men desire in women. What husbands at your age desire to see, they expect in their wives. And I said, I want to explain to you five or seven expectations of a husband of, of, your, of your age. And now, and she was so attentive. Within one day, the husband had changed and the laugh between them was so great. It continued. God commanded blessings until that woman came and said to me, Bishop, I did know that husband are so good until you gave me the key to unlock. Unless, until you gave me the secret, you, you led me to knowing what should be done. And therefore, it's very important, this boy came and say, said, uh, I can't allow, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before men. And when this boy got back, he found that in his father's house, he cannot be otherwise. The status is that of a son. And he was listed back, clothed very well, and started eating as a son, living as a son, and feeling that he's a true son. And when you discover God as a father, and you discover keys to, to unlock, unlock his treasures, and gain favor with him, you discover that things change. We need to unlock our faith by coming back to ourselves and discover secret of the kingdom that we have, we have never, never discovered. Why? Some of us, you just live, eat, drink, dress. You've never sat down to discover yourself in relation to the Father. Another thing very important, we talk about a prophetic connection. Bible always have servants in every stage and every season, reason, lifted by God to lead people. That's why in the day of Moses, God said to Moses, Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Even at the Red Sea and other parts of the journey, whoever obeyed Moses was obeying God. Moses was the person endowed with the burden and vision and wisdom to lead these people. In the days of Joshua, God said, Joshua, arise. You are the one who will cause these people to cross over to the other side of promised land. Any time you live, if you are faithful follower of Christ, you will discover that there is a prophetic connection somewhere in the church, in the altar of Christ that blesses you. And that's why in the Bible, things ended well when a true prophet spoke. In 2 Kings 7 verse 1, when Elisha spoke, things ended well. And that's why in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, part B says, Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. That's why in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11, you read it when for seven days the armies and when the, the, the donkeys and the horses went without water, and everybody was dehydrated. All people felt, now we are going to suffer in the hands of the enemy. But Jehoshaphat said, Jehoshaphat of Judah said, Is there no prophet of God in this place that we may inquire from him? 
when Elisha came, he prophesied and said, there will be no rain, there will be no wheat, there will be no sign of rain, but the whole place will be flooded with water. And it happened. Prophetic connection. That's very important as the Lord raises us in his will. Another thing is you must avoid fear. One thing that you unlock your faith is avoiding fear. Do not nurture fear. You either have fear or faith. If you check Chronicles chapter 20 verse 2, there was this attack on Judah and Jehoshaphat. Bible says Jehoshaphat as a human being had some fear, but did not tolerate it, did not nurture it. He turned to God with a deep prayer and truth. Do not allow fear to persist. Turn to God with a deep prayer, even fasting and truth. Yes, another thing that God wants us to do is to deal with strongholds. Majority of the people will never perform well unless we pull down some stronghold. A stronghold, enter into battle, face a demon, face a curse, face a situation. It cannot just end by itself. Somebody has to fight. Pull down stronghold. Another thing, if you want to unlock your faith, bring everything under the spirit of God, even your heart. Yes, even your heart. It will really help you. And God will bless you. Pray and pray. Pray and pray until you bring everything under the Holy Spirit. That's when you'll be comfortable. Establish the truth and be on God's side. Establish the truth and be on God's side. Establish the truth. Do not live in deception. Do not live in fear. Do not live a life whereby you are not clear, you just speculate. Stop it. Establish the truth. And after knowing the truth, stand on God's side. Be on the side of God. Establish the truth and make sure you are on God's side. And finally, I want to say this. Gain position of authority. I'm not talking about leadership. I'm not talking about church leadership, heilake, or you become a bishop, whatever. I'm saying it's very important to gain a position of spiritual authority, anointing that rules, a position whereby you can rule over by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you check the Bible, Bible talks about that. Gain, if, if in Luke chapter 10, from verse 17 to 19, Jesus said to disciples, I now give you power to trod over, to trod over serpents and scorpions. Power over the power of Satan. And nothing will whatsoever hurt you. Jesus would like to see you over, over. Yes, that's very important. In Romans 16 verse 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. God is happy when you gain position of authority. And that itself can unlock your faith. Can unlock your faith. I pray that God will reach out to you right now. And the faith, the faith in God will be unlocked in you. And you'll never be a slave. But God will raise you now in a way that you become a winner. From this moment, as I pray for you, God change your life and God make you bold by his word. In Christ we pray.